Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Legends Only. My name is T. Kyle. And I'm Bradley. And this is your weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about Legends Only. You, you are Beyonce. Thank and, you. And as- thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Rita Ora. She's back. Oh, yeah. It is. No one listening will know this, but we are recording before the hour of 10 a.m. today. Unheard of. Never done before. This is Beyonce's fault. This is Beyonce's Blame fault. Blame her. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's true. It's the first ever low sunrise series. <laughs> Seven in the morning. <laughs> Seven in the morning. It's fine. I'll you wait won't up. break my soul. I, if well, you will. <laughs> break my sleep cycle though oh mm-hmm. she's Woke breaking a lot of things yeah dishes oh bop <laughs> let's talk about that for an hour let's talk about breaking dishes <laughs> up in here bop. <laughs> bop, 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 bop truly the only girl who has not poked her head out during pride actually in the world in the world she's still missing yeah i mean she just had the baby so is the album yeah, but I thought she would hit upload when the baby came out, but <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> export. Uh, yeah, <laughs> export. Bobby died. Wave. Export. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a very special bay bayified episode mm-hmm. because this is our renaissance. Yeah, it is. Yeah, she's starting. She is starting. She's starting quickly. With advance warning for once. Yeah, she's changing it up. She's switching up. First time, I want to say, since 2011 with four, because 2013 was self-titled. That changed the game with the digital drop. Iconic. 2016 Lemonade also. I think Lion King might have had some dates around it, the gift, but I I chalked that up to Disney. I don't really feel like that's like... I forgot about that. Beyonce. And the the Carters album was also a surprise, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Like, they announced it, I want to say, during the concert or something. There was a surprise element to that. This was like, it's coming in July. There's a single. It's like, what is this, a throwback? Mm -hmm. And also, true to 2011, it leaked. It did. A few hours early. Which makes me wonder, do we think that's why there is a slow rollout. Someone in the orbit is leaking. Maybe. Who do we think it is? Jay-Z? Is he bitter? Read it's Aura. Drake, Drake, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I 500,000 theory... retweets and I'll leak Renaissance. <laughs> 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 I love the theory that Drake, who also has a house-influenced body of work, changed his album title to Honestly Whatever. He did? No, I mean, that's the name of it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no wait. I thought it was wait, wait, honestly wait. never mind. Honestly never mind. Oh yeah. I don't know why I just said honestly whatever. Well, never mind. Honestly never mind. Because he probably was like, you know what? Honestly <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah. Like let's get this out before she does this. Yeah, it's been a house influenced uh era already for the heavy hitters so far. We're just starting, but we'll get into that. So, why don't we talk about uh the first things that came out of the renaissance announcement oh the renaissance era the renaissance She's era back. well first of all act one renaissance mm. what do we think that means that there's a two <laughs> and maybe a three and then a finale oh maybe on and maybe four, four Ooh. vi x <laughs> oh, vi x is 10 CT. Yeah. x v yes iv mm-hmm. <gasps> blue 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 i v that's a concept. We'll see you in it. part four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> see you in court Parkwood Entertainment. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah. So act one Renaissance. I mean, my hopes and dreams are that it is sort of a Robin body talk situation where we're getting chunks through the year uh, and then leading up to a full body of work. I think that would be fun. This one already has, uh, did we confirm 16 tracks? Mm-hmm. So there's speculation that's going to be like four, four, four. Four. Oh, four. Mm-hmm. She loves a four. Uh, but this was track six, Break My Soul, is what came first. Before this came out, she did a little photo shoot. 
Yeah, she blacked out her socials. She did. With her profile pic. Somebody took the viral Beyonce blacked out her socials. Uh Uh-huh. It was Yolanda Fister. Yolanda Fister. Fister. Shout out to Yolanda Fister. She's at it again and said Countess Luann has blacked out her socials ahead of new music. I think Yolanda Fister is now off private. Okay, great. On Twitter. Yeah. Because I think the girls were coming at her with the copyright. Oh, Strikes oh. with the memes. The R I A A. The R I C's and the A's and the yeah. in courts. And the, the you can't make nobody's doing Taz memes management, these days. Parkwood management. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're wondering why I don't make remixes and memes on Twitter anymore, it's because I've had enough suspensions. I'm right. Shocked I haven't been deleted yet. Right. No, it's actually true though. And there's going to be a whole lot of takedowns after this. You know, every time everyone gets excited about a major mm-hmm. <laughs> release, they're going to do all these memes and then they're going to get clocked. Yep. Nope. I'm not. Suspended. Um, I'm not messing with that hive. No, not the uh, the takedown hive. Nope. No. Well. But anywho, <laughs> shall we kick off this episode with a little segment that we like to call High Fashion? <laughs> So Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh my god, that's so high fashion. So high fashion. Beyonce kicked off this renaissance with British Vogue. She did. Strike a pose. Strike a pose. There's nothing to it. Anna Wintour is shaking. Her little bob. She is. Rattled. She needs to get it together because <laughs> British Vogue is out selling, out charting, out acclaiming. Mm-hmm. Left and right. These photo shoots are just so superior. Do something, Anna. <laughs> well, we get a cover story called Be Ready, Beyonce's Poised for Her Next Evolution. Wow, I see what they did there. Yeah, by the editor-in-chief himself, Edward Enfull. And we get a photo shoot that had everybody raising their eyebrows. Because it wasn't just high fashion, which it certainly is. But it seemed like she was dropping some hints. We got, I think, my favorite of all well actually no there's a few favorites the sitting on a white horse which could recall bianca jagger riding the white horse at studio 54 oh we got i thought she was referencing radar horse well it could be that Mm -hmm. very inspired very inspired (laughs) uh we have this sort of uh sequined gold look we have the my actual favorite the sitting on the giant fucking disco ball Mm-hmm. With the That's giant, my favorite too. Like baby pink pumps, boots, put a disco ball into something. I'm paying attention. And then, of course, we have the riding on a motorcycle, which did cause a bit of a, a, a kerfuffle with the little monster community. Yeah. Who they should just be busy at the hangar with the planes <laughs> working on the mechanics of. <laughs> They're fighter jets because right now, I'm sorry, but you are you're in a uh, straight era. You are holding our hands. Yeah, the Top Gun era really just <laughs> flew in and during Pride. Out. Yeah, but she's still saluting and doing you know that. So you worry about that right now. <laughs> You've got something else on your hands, and you should be holding them. <laughs> yeah. So we did get a little bored this way, uh, motorcycle, but for the most part. Not that you should always take these as like signs of what's to come, but like the visuals for the Vogue shoot were giving disco. And then even more exciting, we got our first official taste of the new music through his description, which is also unique to this campaign. Like once again, we're getting teases ahead of time, which is shocking. But Uh, still elusive. Still elusive. But the teaser said, instantly a wall of sound hits me. Soaring vocals and fierce beats combine. In a split second, I'm transported back to the clubs of my youth. I want to get up and start throwing moves. It's music I love to my core. Music that makes you rise, that turns your head, that turns your mind to cultures and subcultures, to our people past and present. Music that will unite so many on the dance floor. Music that touches your soul. As ever with Beyonce, it's all about the intent. I sit back after the wave absorbing it all. So do you guys love clubbing? Are you dancers? What he meant to write. (laughs) There are at least five keywords in this that are like, I'm sorry, what? Fierce beats? Clubs? Disco? Dance floor? Dance? Dance floor? So everybody did panic. Also, uh, they brought out their calculators because Edward is 50. 
50 years old. So clubs of my youth, we were like, okay, well, how old was he when he was in his late, you know, teens, early 20s? And that would place us in the late 80s, early 90s. And lo and behold, break my soul comes and she's right on the money. That mm-hmm. is exactly the sweet spot of where this is. So yeah, what happened when we found out about Break My Soul, we got it through a bio switch on yep. Instagram and Twitter. She just said, track six, break midnight. My soul. Midnight. See you there. Panic. Panic. Panic in the industry. And at about nine or ten PM, I would say, the little shits <laughs> booted up their kazaa. They booted <laughs> up their cloud. Flair <laughs> and she AOL appeared. music first AOL. listen. <laughs> yeah. There were Google Doc links, there were Discord links, not NARS because we're classy, but there were Um <laughs> <laughs> Well and she uh started to disperse on the internet. Smartly, because there's not a second to lose. They at least hit upload on Tidal, mm-hmm. which I think you could do instantly, whereas the other DSPs had to roll out at midnight, but they did that real quick, and then they did um, the lyric video came a few hours early. They said, you won't break my soul. You won't break my charts. It's also funny <laughs> because we were just talking about lyric videos oh, yeah. recently, we were like, and they were like, oh, it's so dated. Yeah. Like, that was such a trend yeah. back in the day, and then yeah. all of a sudden it's like, I'm bopping uh-huh. to break my soul on YouTube on repeat. Lyric video. This is all very 2011 throwback. It's mm-hmm. funny. But it's smart, though. It is. And I mean... I cannot wait to see what she does with the music video, but we'll see. And then finally, by midnight, we got the incredibly fierce cover art, High Fashion. Which she has since changed again. She has. She flipped it. You, you mean see that? at first it was just the text? No, the image was then flipped. The image. Oh, yeah. She flipped it on her she literally in- just Instagram. Flipped it. Yeah. But she posted the other one, too, and then she reflipped it. Unless wow. I'm delusional, but I swear that I've seen I've seen it flipped on her yeah. Instagram, and I was confused, but... You know what? I like both versions, wherever Mm -hmm. she's standing. Uh, We love a long glove moment. I think it's a a great cover. I wish it hit the streaming because it was just the text that hit streaming. And I'm checking now to see if they've changed it at all. They did change it on Spotify now. So now it is the the glove window look, which is pure late 80s, early 90s dance vibes already. Very excited. I hope that's a look from the video. But yeah, so Break My Soul is here. Bop. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. So what do we think? The girls went electronic. Yeah, I don't want to say that anyone at Parkwood Entertainment is listening to the pod, but clearly, clearly, there's no other option. There's no other excuse or reason. Yeah, I got a couple DMs that were like, oh my God, you were right. And I'm like, no, actually, I feel like if I say it enough, at some point, <laughs> someone is going to go electronic. It's actually because we're uh, entering a recession. Oh. <laughs> There's all these interesting... Recessessants. Uh-huh. Recessessants. Oh, that's a chic, though. Sana- yeah. Sanessants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there are all these interesting thing pieces popping up already about how during the 2008 recession, we had Gaga come with Just Dance, and we had Black Eyed Peas, and we had a lot of party club pop really pop up. And so they're wondering between Drake and Beyonce if this is like another resurgence of that. Like we're dancing and we have no money. It's an interesting... Maybe so. Interesting perspective. To be fair, we're also quitting our jobs. So that's not going to help with the money. Yeah. She told us to. Basically calling for a general strike. She is. Yeah. Points were made. Yeah. So Break My Soul, musically, is a... I will say homage or inspired by most specifically the duo behind Robin S's show me love are credited in the songwriting directly, but also I hear a little black box. I hear basically the genre, the the sound of the period in general, but certainly show me love is there, which obviously is one of the most legendary house songs of that time period. Because we were wondering if she was going to go disco, like 70s, or, you know, club culture around the 90s. So it sounds like we're we're right in the late 80s, early 90s. Right now, might change. She might be doing dance from all different types, genres. But for now, that's where we are, which 
I tweeted about it, but I my dream would be for her to just fully do Pulse Platinum, the CD compilation. This was a good Instagram story from you. <laughs> a concept. I That album bops. It bops completely. The track list is a dream. And I do think it might have all of the sort of sonic references that she would be looking at if she's going to do a record like this. Because I think it's kind of exactly sonically where where she was heading at least with something like this i love it yes it's got it's like i do you remember these commercials of course i do <laughs> it's there's so good. playlists on spotify too of oh that's this true. cd that is true yeah because people were asking if they could actually listen to the cd i'm like of course there's um, this one and also the one the moods pure moods or something oh yeah pure moods was everywhere you used but, to go to the store yeah. and the cd rack would be with the buttons yeah. Do you remember? That's how we used to get our new music back in the day, kids. That's you'd right. go up to the rack and preview the songs by hitting buttons. That's right. Or you'd hear one of these commercials at three in the morning when you woke mm-hmm. up and you were like, I, I want to get this Amber, This Is Your Night song. For three low payments of fourteen ninety nine, yeah. you can shake your tits. Yeah. <laughs> 1-800, shake your tits. The lowdown. <laughs> Yes, it's got Real McCoy, Robin S., Crystal Water, CC Peniston. Uh, more on her in a second, actually. Bizarre Inc., Hadaway, like ugh, a sweet spot, a cherished moment in time. So yeah, we've got we've got a Robin S. Our second Robin S. referencing song of the year. Charlie X C X did used to know me. Robin S. As she should is collecting checks. Deserved. Uh, yes. Absolutely. We will be discussing Charlie XCX in a little bit. Oh, we way. will be for different reasons. Stay yes. tuned. Yes. Yeah, this was a co-write with none other than The Dream and Tricky, Christopher Tricky Stewart, as well as we've got Big Frida on the track, which is now her second collaboration after Formation. Beyonce loves Big Frida. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy the the song, and if anything, this has made me extremely excited for this era. I am ready for this era. I'm also enjoying the meaty four minute thirty second track time going up against Spotify's streaming culture. This is not a TikTok song. This is oh well, it probably will. Be. It will be. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, not made for the TikTok. One of the things I love most about this song is that Beyonce has decided to. Um, you know, she's done some acting in her day. And this time around, she is pretending to be a nine to five worker. She is. She said, Oh, this job's working me so damn hard. <laughs> Get in at nine, help by five. Can't sleep because they're working me so hard. <laughs> I don't think she knows that we don't even go in at nine anymore. It's like 7 a.m. and you're there <laughs> till eight. Three jobs now. Three jobs, side hustle to pay the bills. But we've got to love it. You know, let her have her fun, let her cosplay. As the regular American, this is clearly a song for us, the locals. Mm -hmm. It's very much like, I want to get my hair down and go out on the town. My job's working me too hard. This is not something Beyonce relates to. No. She can do whatever she wants. She doesn't need to. She doesn't have a nine to five. It's fun to dream. It's fun to think about. Yeah. It's an anthem for, uh, it's a self-empowerment anthem. It is. It's a summer anthem. It is a summer anthem. Something fun. Something for the summertime. Something for the girls to dance to. I also would like to say, I do love Beyonce from the beginning. I'm not um, crazy hive. In love. Cra- crazy in love. Hive in that, like, you know, standum, stand culture in general, whatever. But I do get a certain thrill out of seeing people seethe about her online. Like, people get so... Oh, she's overrated. Oh, she blah blah blah. Or oh, what, who, what song she's stealing from now? Like, there's a certain annoying backlash to her that I sort of like enjoy watching people see it about because she's so good. And I, so I actually laughable. wondered if you. I feel like it's similar to you and Serena because oh, I and they're get me started. Obviously, they're friends. Yes. And it's sort of like when you're the goat, when you're like truly peerless and and just sort of like one of the once in a lifetime talents, people are mad about everything you mm-hmm. do. And I kind of enjoy it. 
Same. I'm, I'm kind of like, wow, you're so bad right now. The people who are like, wow, Serena's not moving at all in the court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she just came back the other day playing doubles. And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> sir. Right. I don't know. I get a certain pleasure out of it because I'm like, oh, you're bothered. Mm-hmm. Because I really like the song. And so I find it funny that people have to dig in and get so mad about it because they don't like her. Um, they don't like the praise she gets, you know, they don't like her position in, in pop world. I don't know. It's kind of funny to me. I'm like, oh, you're bothered. Yeah. Like very bothered. Uh, yes. Yeah. I think the conversation that it's also generated about house music is, is cool and necessary. And there's a lot of discussion about like the roots and obviously like who <sighs> there are some albums that came out recently that are also early 90s inspired oh yes 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 <laughs> everyone's like oh chromatica's chromatica impact. invented this no right. i okay so <laughs> i am obsessed with this route that beyonce is going mm-hmm. and i know that people were like dragging it they're like oh it's so simple it's so big Mm-mm. i'm obsessed with this because one i love house music yep. we all know this we all know this it. is classic start of house music mm-hmm and what I love about it, too, is the people who were saying Beyonce, like, they're like, oh, I wish she would just be more fun and, like, blah, blah, blah. I always felt was very dismissive in the past two albums because mm. the message was so empowering. Yeah. And owning her culture and really showcasing all of that. This is doing the same thing. And I don't think a lot of people know the roots of house music. Mm. And mm-hmm. this is classic that, like... Chicago, New York, underground house music scene. Like, house music is black music. And I don't think people know that. Right. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I love what she's doing. Yeah, my ultimate dream for this album would honestly be almost like a full exploration of the pioneers of house music and references to all of the iconic producers, vocalists. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is like just the beginning and touching on maybe one of the more obvious or like mainstream biggest hits of that particular time. But it would be so cool if it incorporated even more names from that era. And again, yeah, sort of like how the Lion King brought in so many African artists and creatives for this to be like an uplifting of the house pioneers Mm -hmm. would be fucking amazing. That would be so cool. So I'm wondering because I do wish that we got, of course it'll happen once we hit upload. I would love more of a statement or a mission statement, whatever about like what this is going to be. Cause we still have no idea. I would love to know like what Renaissance means or what it's going to be. But I think this is very cool so far as far as acknowledging the roots of house I also think there. it'll be cool if she goes disco to start mm-hmm. and then it almost hits like the death of disco, like that era mm-hmm. when, cause I have like done a lot of research into like this era yeah. and the whole disco death sucks. to disco, yeah. disco sucks, which is so bizarre to me. Yeah. She could start with that and then it switches into early house and then kind of ends mm. in something new i don't know yeah but like i'm curious to see how much sampling is done on here i feel like there could be really cool yeah stuff that she does with samples yeah it could almost be like from disco to disco sucks backlash to house early to, house to modern like new. queer house like because yeah. there are a lot of rumblings online that Katrinata might be involved honey dijon and that would be like very like modern, modern. queer modern like, edm club house yes so i feel like that could be a cool evolution yeah truly renaissance i feel like that actually would make a lot of sense we'll see i don't want to love my edm kings Uh uh-huh but they would not be like we would not have kaigo right if it was not for this house movement Mm -hmm. from the late 80s like right we stand our kings and our electronic music (laughs) right but this is the start reclamation Mm -hmm. which i really appreciate so i am looking forward to seeing what the full body of work stands for beyonce featuring the chain smokers track 16 <laughs> stop it <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding the true like, pioneers key, i would like stand yes, yes. <laughs> um yeah i'm really excited because i do feel like as you said like that would fit the exact mission statement of beyonce certainly mm-hmm. in the past decade while also still being 
mainstream. Mainstream. Like it would fly over people's, a lot of people's heads, but. Yeah. I do think there's an element of also that I do want her to have fun in the sense of like, she has shouldered some significantly complex themes in the past, I mean, in the past decade of, from everything from racism and sexism to being culturally very significant as far as uplifting all these voices and things like that. And to have come from pop and not had it been so culturally, like she shoulders so much of that then, like back in Desi's Child, I think it's cool to have sort of a return to like the club sounds, like B-Day even. We're all gonna have fun! (laughs) Like it actually, for a second, I thought of Get Me Body, it extended. Ooh. When she's like snaps for the kids and things mm-hmm. like that. Like it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. And yeah, we'll see how like queer she gets also. I mean, this did come during Pride, but it would be interesting to see. It is her first time kind of going queer. Yeah. Well, like l- leaning into it, I think. I think it's always been queer for sure. But yes, I don't... but this is like, I feel like a direct. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see, especially because of the rumored collaborators. I do think there's it's going to maybe be even more so, which obviously we welcome with open arms. You got to be careful with that because the LGBTs have found the song and uh, we're already getting some some memes that remind me why I'm happy that uh, June is nearly over. (laughs) (laughs) Because almost as soon as the title break, my soul was announced. Yep. That was fighting for gay rights (laughs) Mm -hmm. and people were killed. Yeah. Holes. Break my hole. Were hole. filled. Holes were broken and uh, filled. <laughs> There's already like videos of gays. Did you see the one of the like Uh oh. I don't want to drag too much, but like the five gays in a in a line dancing to it. No, I did not see that one. Wait. Cause I feel like this is really gonna be right up your alley. Uh <laughs> <laughs> might have been taken down already. Someone saved it. Nothing on the internet ever goes away. Yeah, they deleted. All right. Well, it was just a row of like white gays dancing to it. But they're it's the funniest part of it is they're just like, Yeah, I break my soul. Like they're they're dancing to it very they're singing along very poorly. That's like the funniness. <laughs> Me. <of it>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chromatica's impact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving it one more attempt by searching gays dancing to break my soul. I really liked Lewis Peitzman's tweet where he said, tomorrow a white gay man with abs will tweet that Break My Soul is overrated and he's never gotten the appeal of Beyonce anyway. There will be 700 quote tweets dragging him. He will post the thirst trap and end the day with twice as many followers as he started with. (laughs) It's funny because it's true. Yeah, wow. So that's what we've got. Renaissance out July 29th. Mm-hmm. Break my soul out now. Also, speaking of breaking holes, oh. um, do people understand that on Twitter, when you like a tweet, people can see that you've liked a tweet <laughs> and then it will populate into other people's feeds? So to the people that are liking the alts of like, break my hole with gaping assholes, uh-huh. like I see this in my feed. So like, I was, <laughs> do you see that too, though? I mean, when it's like so and so liked, so and so liked, so and so liked, and it's just like literally someone writing "break my hole" and it's just a hole, and I'm like, "Sir, it's Tuesday, yep, at ten in the morning." Well, uh, some of you need to uh, go on private with your alts. Yes, Um, yeah, we can't control the gays. We've tried. No, (laughs) it's it's far too late, and yeah, now that they've got "break my hole," it's it's far too late. (laughs) too but that's okay i also loved that tweet that said am i a beyonce fan you won't break my whole what (laughs) what (laughs) and that is from at forever underscore jason yeah we've already we've got a meme already and we've got everyone quitting their job memes Mm -hmm. and then we still have this music video to come there were rumors flying around that it would be like star-studded I saw mm. some early tweets. I saw some tweets that would be a recreation of the video for Show Me Love. Ooh, I would love that. Yeah. We'll have to see. I imagine it won't be too far. Simpler times. Much simpler times. Put up a colorful backdrop and call it a day. Yeah. Film it in SD. 
Yeah. With some VHS grain. That would be good, honestly. I would love that. I still, my hot take is that everything was better in SD. Yeah, we don't need to see the details. No. No. Give a little mystery. Mm -hmm. A little smoothing. Yep. Housewives was better (laughs) in SD. That is a hot take that I stand by. Because now the confessionals look so fake. And to me, that's distracting. Yeah, they look insane. Yeah. Yeah. Two 4K. (laughs) We need to go back to 480p Housewives. (laughs) That is my hot take. I like this take. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Imagine when they're in 8K. That's like smell-o-vision, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> the wine's literally going to be hitting you in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're going to see every stain. Oh, no. Every pore. And that's why you're getting a divorce. <laughs> Wasn't Christina Aguilera supposed to be in that um, movie that had the 4D experience or something? For... Evita. Where am I getting this from? Evita? Yeah. Wasn't really? she supposed to be in like Evita and 4D? What? I swear this was supposed to be a thing. Evita and 4D? Oh. You're not lying. 2014. Okay, so somewhere in the brain, she was clicking. She's there. Reportedly, Aguilera will perform the legendary Don't Cry For Me Argentina Mm -hmm. uh, in the new Broadway-themed film experience called Broadway 4D. (laughs) Look at that. (laughs) Wow. Look at that. Can you Dug imagine that one out of the archives. Her standing over the balcony and like the the 3D tits in your face while she's singing Don't Cry. Where did that go? Wow. Just get like a whiff of a cheeseburger. Oh, wait. This is how Christina would have looked as Evita in Broadway 4D. The girl is Xtina's double for the dance scenes. Interesting. See, look at that. Wow. Wow. We've learned so Talk much. Talk about a renaissance. Talk about a renaissance. <laughs> oh, well. Don't cry for me, Kelly Rowland. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Relly, Kelly Rowland, the true gay icon. Yes, thank the you. second lead vocalist. Thank you That's for recalling this. Yes. Um, Again, another fire tweet from you, which by the way. <laughs> I've been tweeting pure fire. First of all, shout out to Brad's Twitter. <laughs> Viral Stacey Arico tank top. True. Which, by the way, you are now wearing a Tony Braxton one. I am. This is a sleigh as thank well. You. Thank you. Your write up on memews.com about Break My Soul. <laughs> this promo. Thank bops. you. And now the legend as a lifelong Rolling mm-hmm. Stone. Another hit tweet from Mew Muse. Another hit tweet, but also I have a bone to pick about this one. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> First of all, it it was not missed on me that when this came out, I was like, oh, fellow child of destiny, Kelly Rowland, sister. Just did, granted, she's always done dance, always, but she just did her own early 90s moment with Amorphous and CeCe Peniston's Finally. She did that last year around the exact same time, Pride. Pride, but she's late. Right. It was like July 1st. And we were like, wait, you missed it by a week. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But excellent song amazing live performance and i tweeted the live performance and i was just like hey remember um kelly just did this one a year ago and michelle you're up next like complete the trifecta please i mean say yes featuring i don't know i don't know someone put we break the dawn over a house beat yes everyone's like pointing at me they're like you do it right you could just do it (laughs) um but okay this this tweet about the kelly song has over eighteen thousand likes at this point (gasps) Oh, Rita but, Ora who? <laughs> but literally, I could release my new song because of this. But my thing is like, why is it always a coulda, woulda, shoulda tweet that does numbers about... It's the same as gays let f- sparks flop. Oh, It's like, why do you all go so hard for the, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda moments in pop culture and not when it's actually here? Why do you know... The song itself should have 18K likes from when it came out. Mm-hmm. But it's always if like... everyone would look back at everything we've been saying and praying and preaching and saying and praying. It's like it's always the I knew about it, but you didn't kind of vibe to be like, yeah, why didn't that one go viral? Too? Like You ripping up the tweet. I don't want it. <laughs> it's tainted. <laughs> out of my house. You should have streamed Sparks back in 2015 when I told you so. <laughs> Literally. There's just something so funny. Twitter, without a doubt, always goes hard for like, this should have been a hit kind of tweets. 
But yeah, not we know. But not when it's actually out. It's crickets when the song's there. And then a year later, everyone's like, yeah, stand them when they come out, you bastards. <laughs> but thanks for the for the tweet, love. That's just a shout out to Kelly Rowland, which, mm-hmm. you know, there could never be enough. And truly, she has been on the EDM scene since Commander. Ahead of her time. Like, oh, God, forever, though, really. Yeah. But that was specifically like early 90s. I was like, oh, she literally just and I don't mean it in a copying way. I'm just like, amazing. Our Destiny's Child Queens are doing this thing. Literally, Michelle Williams get in the studio. But anyway, love a house piano. Love a house piano. I think we've probably renaissance our all the songs we could songs. Yes. So why not move on to the other uh, goat? Another high fashion for the week. Another legend. Also in Vogue. Yes. Vogue Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia, Which we're always reading around here. Mm -hmm. That's one of our favorite subscriptions. Julia Fox. Julia Fox, everyone. Vogue Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Wearing herself a Polaroid moment. Yes. With video. She has posted this on her Instagram if you want to look at the whole shoot. She didn't know it was a cover shoot until she was told. Oh. That's what she said in the caption. She didn't even know it was a cover. Well. Just casual icon mm-hmm. showing up for a photo shoot. Now, Julia Fox is operating at a higher frequency than all of us. Yes. And it's going to she's take- She's on a new vibration. She's on a new vibration. Found found a new foundation. And it's in vogue Czechoslovakia. She simply is- She's doing whatever she wants to do. She is finding new ways to apply makeup. She is wearing the year 3000 couture. And I'm obsessed with it. Tits out. Yeah. Okay. Tits out. (laughs) I'm just obsessed with her latest moves. This photo shoot is no exception. Yeah. She Mm. wore the Polaroid outfit, which is a reference. It is. Um, And also Simone wore that in her opening look um, season 13. We love a high fashion photo shoot, don't we? The best part about this, though, mm. is in the video, as yeah. she's holding all <laughs> the Polaroids, yeah. the videographer says, who are you wearing? Myself. <sighs> she doesn't She doesn't miss. Reference? She said, yeah. funny story. I had no idea I was shooting the cover until we wrapped, and I was my on my way out when Yael asked me, how do you feel that you just shot your first cover of Vogue? My heart skipped a beat. I genuinely had no idea. I thought it was just a spread. Honestly, I'm so happy to be in Vogue at all. I didn't care. (laughs) (laughs) A little, maybe. Thank you to my fans and haters. Because without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. I also really love the looking camp right in the eye photo with the mirror. It's also very Madonna. She knows exactly what she's doing. Yes, she does. She does. I'm excited to get into so I only the Julia like, Sants. I only Fox Sants. <laughs> Fox Sants. I do need to dive into anything she's actually done because I haven't. I haven't watched Uncut Gems. I haven't done the actual Julia Fox deep dive. I've been told well, it's actually good, and so that I would stand even more. But I would, you know, I'm assuming that this whole Julia Fox Sants. Is going to lead to a lot of like movies and TV coming up. Hopefully, an album. Hopefully, an album. Most of all, a '90s house album. Listen, look. I would not say no. No. When Jesus says yes, when Julia says yes, no. I would can. love for every single queen of pop to do yeah a house album. Basically that. But I need to do the deep dive, and actually like, unironically stand her work because I hear it's actually good too. So, I'm gonna figure that out. Put that on my watch list. Yeah. Well, I think we would it would be remiss not to mention as we championed her, champion her for so long. Every queen of pop uh, makes a misstep now and then. Yep. <sighs> Maybe this could be a teaching lesson or a a what not to do. Mm-hmm. Cuz the quote tweets. It was bad for her. <laughs> it was really bad for her. Former Fifth Harmony member Normani Motivation, Chanteuse. Did a little collab with... A man. A man named Chris Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Not great. No. The quote tweets really took the cake. 
Eight. Eight. <laughs> Her right up. <laughs> Not great. Not great. Choices. Choices were made. And we, we hate to see her not win, but this just didn't go over well. No. Very notably on on the internet, on Beyonce's internet. We're going to hope with the, this just we just keep it moving with a solo single real, yeah. real quick. Sometimes we get lost in the sauce of a label mate collab, right? They're both RCA. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. So sometimes these things happen. <sighs> well... <clears throat> Um, it was a very uh, we're all rooting for you moment on Twitter. Yeah, it really is that. Yeah. Someone who's... All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, witch, speaking uh, of... Well, she's not a witch, but... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's not what I said. <laughs> I have some Wendy tea Oh, that I'm going to be spilling in the after show. Okay. Which is a new which thing. Which I have not heard. No, I live see, reaction. This, I was like, I'm not even putting this in text form. Okay, this is on the Lo After Show, the new. I almost said interactive, but it's not <laughs> the new new 4D experience. Show, 4D experience <laughs> featuring Christina Aguilera, Mew Mews, yes. and T Kyle performing live. live from the balcony in Hell's Kitchen. Don't cry for me, Hell's Kitchen, Tina. Yes, shout out to all of our supporters over on. Patreon.com slash legends only. Yes, this podcast is independently supported by you, the listeners. That's right. And so every week we are doing an after show where we discuss things after after the the show show. over on Patreon.com slash legends only. So, yeah. Which, by the way, thank you to everyone for supporting us, especially, like, now. I feel like it's, I don't know, it just, like, really means a lot, you know? Oh, absolutely. We're in a recession. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the fact that someone's, like, I'm going to give you money Mm -hmm. because I like your podcast is, you know, it means. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. We're independent and we uh, don't have ads. (laughs) <laughs> well in inver- not like yeah we have a lot of ads but not really like what we, we like we promote a lot oh but they're all they're not paying us right exactly <laughs> <laughs> they're not paying us for anything yeah truly shout out to truly i mean you single-handedly truly? you fund them oh well call it out yep anyway anyway patreon.com slash legends only Last week's episode, by the way, mm. I was getting emotional this week because a lot of people were responding to your story about Kylie Minogue mm-hmm. on last week's after show. Yeah, you know, Mew Mew's had a week. I had a week. I'm still yeah. recovering, to be honest. Um, Mew stands. Yeah, but that's in last week's after show. Moving on. Moving on to All right. uh, uh, somebody else who is having a big week is somebody who I'm just going to let somebody else introduce right now extra special guest judge Tuve Lu yes uh, uh, Tuve Lu introduced by RuPaul over on the Fryacking Ranch yes Ranch Ranch hey now for the reference for the for the record this is actually something we have talked about that Americans say Tove Lo even if it's Tuve Lu and she herself has said it in this little clip here, you can hear how it's actually pronounced by her herself, Tuvalu. And I think, like, I think RuPaul I is wrong. In a, Tavlo. In a, right. You just came up with a fourth way to say it, which is, is it? unique. The, the like, Americanized version is Tovlo. Tovlo. But, like, she's saying Tuvalu. Why Tuvalu. do I say Tavlo? There's no A. I'm a fucking I think idiot. it's because it's, like, how you say, like, M- Mario. 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 Well, no, I guess not. I don't know. You just say things. It's weird. I say Mario, but then I say Mario Kart. Right. That, yes, that's what I was thinking of, because I was like, he says Mario sometimes. Whatever. Anyway. Tuvalu. Tuvalu. RuPaul. It's very Raven Simone. <laughs> Tanasha. Tanasha. Yes. Tuvalu. Has... A album coming out called Dirt Femme. We did an album announcement. We've got a new song out. 
And we've got a track list that is very exciting. Two, not one, but two features from the legend, rising legend, S.G. Lewis. I mean, that is extremely exciting. Uh, Victoria Monet, Dua Lipa, his album. Very exciting stuff. We love S.G. I love the art. Yes. The cover art. She's giving Scorpion vibes. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I want to make sure that's that I'm not making this up. Scorpio. So she's she's giving you Scorpio. Oh, her horoscope. Her horoscope. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes. Also, I would love if... Yeah, I feel like she should take a stand about her name because I feel like it is awkward now to be, like, knowingly saying her name wrong because it's, like... It reminds me of when... It's not my name. Teresa was like Teresa oh. Judice, and then randomly out of nowhere, she was like Judice. Judice, right? But then she switched it back. That's a different case. That's yeah. uh, oh. maybe she was trying to avoid court time. I that. said Melissa. Yeah, I don't like sprinkle cookies. <laughs> Throw them in the garbage. In any case, we do have a lot coming. There's also a new song drop, which actually features probably some of her best vocals. It's more of a stripped. Stripped down, like stripped, stripped Tina. Uh, it's called True Romance, and it's pretty much just all vocals. And yeah, she's got a new era incoming in October. We've got some time, but she said something about it that I thought was interesting. Um, she released the song and she said, Dirt Femme is about me and my relationship with my femininity. When I started out as a writer, I used my I used to view my feminine traits as weak and would enhance my masculine traits to get ahead in life. I feel a big energy shift in my environment since then, and this album reflects the various ways my feminine side has both helped and hurt me. I'm a pansexual woman married to a straight man. I believe masculine and feminine lives on a spectrum in all humans. Tits out, okay? <laughs> Tits out. Yeah. So. We stand. We, we stand. Always under pressure. Very excited. Some exciting titles on this album include Attention Horror, featuring Channel Trace, Julia Fox. which also nope. is very exciting. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> that would be the dream. That's, it would be, yes. Uh, that would be her first single title. I would love it. Also, Pineapple Slice sounds like a good one with S.G. Lewis. Oh. Mm -hmm. Also, Teresa Judice inspired. <laughs> if you know, you know. Yeah. So we're excited to hear this new album coming out October 14th. On her own label, Pretty Swede Records. Oh, oh, get it? Got it. It's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet, you if you ask me. Well, speaking of girls who've gone off their labels. Yes. Good segue into somebody who went from Atlantic Records to the Metaverse mm -hmm. with a Roblox concert. Yes. You used Ava's to know impact. her. Yes. Yes. Once again, and I hate to say it, but really following in the footsteps of Miss Max mm -hmm. once again. I, last <laughs> night at the event that I was at, explained the Ava Max Roblox concert to someone. That must have not gone over well. No, it went over really oh, well. Okay. And I was explaining how they pushed her into the lava. Yes. And I was just like, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. <laughs> but it was very entertaining for you me. You can catch yourself describing Ava Max being mm -hmm. pushed into lava. Yep. At any dinner party. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, in this case... Uh, Charlie was not pushed into lava. No. She was frozen. She was frozen? Yes. And a giant Samsung phone did come down and crush thousands of attendees. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So Charlie XCX did a Roblox concert. She did. But her Roblox person was like not a Roblox person. It was like a A 50-foot sim. tall sim woman. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was very Attack of the 50-foot woman. <laughs> literally uh, it's just stomping on everyone mm -hmm. i didn't hear like the actual concert because i think they set it to the studio versions of her songs on t on tiktok they did yeah but in most of the servers her roblox person crashed <laughs> pun intended and oh yeah was just frozen in a like t-shape oh yeah so now there's memes of like the crucifix <laughs> And the character was just completely Jesus frozen XCX. in a T-bone shape. That's like a T-bone, right? Yeah. Like a T. A T. Just, it didn't move. Yeah. And it was completely frozen while Used to Know Me was playing. Uh -huh. And then in other servers, she crashed and was like below, like in the stage, like twitching and like glitching <laughs> yeah. out. It was so bad and glitchy. 
Yeah, if you catch any of these clips on TikTok, <laughs> it is really giving you like ancient GameCube yeah. just <laughs> floppery. I don't totally know like what what they're supposed to do, to be honest. Like I don't even actually know. She was doing the used to know me choreo, I think. Oh. It was very simple. Yeah. But she crashed the servers. <laughs> yeah. She flies forward and does a Jesus on the cross. Yeah. And then slowly a giant Samsung phone <laughs> gets lowered onto the mm-hmm. entire crowd. Just crushes all the little crushes Lego all the people. Little people. Yeah. Roblox videos are so funny. They really are. I don't feel like it's the... like little Legos just being like, yes, yeah. yes, grow. I don't feel like the, the technology grow. or the graphics have evolved at all <laughs> since the first Sims. It's like the same shit. Mm-hmm. It looks Which is what same. makes it so funny it's because so like, people funny. mod it. So there's like wigs <laughs> and like ponytails and like little skirts. Oh my God. Why is it so funny? It's, it's so like funny. Habo Hotel. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The metaverse is not new, by the way. No. No, it's not. Speaking of TikTok and things that are not new, actually. Oh. Good good segue again. Is it time for a little TikTok, TikTok talk? talk. We were already pretty much talking about it. But mm. now we're going to talk about a legend who has conquered social media. And the charts. And her label didn't even force her. Nope. Kate Bush. Now, we've been doing the... We've been tracking this for the past few weeks. And wondering if this would happen. And indeed it did. And maybe fingers crossed in America. But Kate Bush is officially number one on the UK official singles chart. And number four, at least, pre-Drake in the US Hot 100. Literally breaking several records, including, this is very impressive, three-time record breaker for this feat of running up that hill, a deal with God, going to number one. She now becomes the oldest female artist ever to score a number one on the official singles chart, replacing Cher, who was 52 when Believe went number one. She's got the longest time taken for a song to go number one. It's 37 years. And then the longest ever gap between number ones. Her last number one was 44 years ago. Which is difficult to get. Not everybody has that. It's incredible. We youngins paid homage to the legends for their great contributions. Granted, do I think Cher is going to like eventually snatch that back? Probably. Probably. But pretty legendary if you ask me. And she actually just did a BBC Sounds super rare broadcast interview Mm -hmm. this week. It was super gracious and sweet. It was so sweet. She's so cute. She's just overwhelmed. And as we found out, she's been watching Stranger Things from the beginning. So she was already down. For yeah, the collab. and was involved in the placement. Yeah, like she said they showed it to her, and she yeah. loved it. She and... said she liked that. Essentially, the song was like a talisman for the character Max, and was a scene as a positive thing. She thought that was really lovely. Yeah, it was such a sweet little catch up. You can tell she's not like checking up on the socials and knows the nuances of the memes and stuff, but she loves her new generation of listeners. She's just super grateful for all of it. So everyone who's like gatekeeping her can shut the fuck up because she's like, no, I love it. Yeah. (laughs) It's so cool. It is super sweet. And yeah, who knows what will come from this? I'm super interested to know if they'll like do some sort of reissues or I mean, I don't think new music is on the horizon, but who knows? You never know these things when they spark a renaissance. What could happen? Oh, you know, you never know. You never know. But they also used a cool version of it in this season for part two trailer for Stranger Things. It's used again, and it's a very cool echoey kind of mix of it. It's very cool. I have a mix of this that I want to shout out. Ooh, Not a remix, but a re... What would you... This is like a... Remake? Yeah, a remake of Running Up That Hill that came out in 2021... Mm-hmm. The end of last year. And I was like, oh, I, because I heard the song and I was like, wait, I, I feel like I know this from something. This is EDM. It's electronic. It's by Enima featuring Meg Myers. Wait, and Enima? Yeah. Like Enema? No, like A N Y M A. Enima. An- wow. Tuve Lu. Enima. Yeah. Enima. Enima. Yeah. Called Running. 
featuring uh-huh. Meg Myers. Very good. But was ahead of like the curve of this obviously taking off. But it's just a cool remixed, remastered, still iconic. Yeah. The Meg Myers cover of it is good. I yeah, that's a really good cover. Yeah. Um so throw that on your playlist. Yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it. I wonder if I could play just a bit of what they did to the song at the beginning of this trailer. They need to put this out. Yeah. Death. <laughs> it's very like. Yeah. bum ba bum ba bum Love it. Running and running and running and running. Absolutely. ba bum I make a deal with God, with God, <laughs> with God, with God, with God. It's exactly how yeah. it is. Ba-da-bum. Now, the next, <laughs> any, anyway, the next person that's making a deal with Shirzy. Um, <laughs> deal with the devil. <laughs> deal with the devil. <laughs> um, who I will be discussing in a moment. But first of all, Carmeet, Carmeet of the legendary Pussycat Dolls is doing it for all the girls, performing at Albany Pride doing her solo rendition of React. And it's on TikTok. You can With watch. live vocals. Live vocals. Giving it her all. Bittersweet as fuck, though. Just to watch, like, oh, this was the reunion tour. Once One-fifth of it. One-sixth yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah, we got a little PCD reunion action at Albany Pride. I'm sure she's going to get hit with a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> From Do you Jersey. understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm suing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, speaking of Shirzy, there is a brand new flip. I did a post about this because I was mad. Because <laughs> I... This is wild. This is wild. There is a mystery troupe. Let me tell you something about a mystery troupe. I'm tired of this shit. Elusive. I don't like... A mystery troupe. I think it was like a thing in like 2014 of like mystery producers and stuff like that. Or like... Niall Stroberg. Yeah. Yes. Where it's just like, okay, I don't, I don't care. Just tell me who it is. It's somebody with money because (laughs) it's... It's It always is. It always is. Anyway, this mystery troupe of producers and DJs called Rain Radio actually went top 10 last year and we didn't talk about this song which I don't know why it uh, went under our radar, but they actually sampled Nelly Furtado's Big Hoops, Bigger the Better, in a song called Talk About last year, which went top 10 in the UK. And they're back this week with a new song called He Goes Down. And I got the press release for it, and I saw like a man, and I saw an arcade cover art, and I like was about to click out because I don't. When I see a man in a press release, I click out, and then I saw the word Nicole Scherzinger, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> it is a sample of Nicole Scherzinger's "Right There," wow. 2011 Killer Love single. Yeah, it flips the song. It turns it into a banger. Well, it was before. It was before, but now it's a club bop, and it's great. I don't know who it is. I'm mad about it. It's not me. It's not you. I wish it was. I do wonder it, if it's an F word, because, I mean, to take <laughs> Nelly Furtado's Bigger the Better, and then... <laughs> Literally. It does make you who wonder. Who is having who, that conversation? Who is having that conversation? We don't, we don't know yet. Who's, who's the identity of Rain Radio? Let's talk about the F word, though. Whoever it is did a good job. Yeah, so get into uh, this new music here. Get into He Goes Down. Add it to your running playlist or your dancing playlist. It's good for that. They, they chipmunk her voice, but it's fine because you know what? All the kids are doing that. They are. The sped up remix. Somebody commented like, oh, why did they do that to her voice? I'm like, well... To avoid the uh, copyright detection. Probably. That's how you do it. And also look at Nelly's Say It Right. Look at Demi's Cool for the Summer. They pitched it up. They did it 
so much that they the label put out the sped up versions of those mm-hmm. songs. I'm so sorry, but the kids are doing this right now. They are. They are. So transposing is what it's called in Logic Pro. Yeah, put that pitch up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Semi tone pitch up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know who doesn't need a transpose to have a hit? Inna. Yep. <laughs> Our faithful Romanian queen of pop is back with the banger of the week because she puts out one a week. She really does. She put literally out 8, does. 8,000 songs a year. 8,000 songs. And you don't hear her complaining. In fact, you no. see her on a treadmill with a glass of wine and heels. Is Inna on TikTok? I think so. Oh. She doesn't She's everywhere. Yeah. She's, she does like vlogs, she does YouTube. She's on Instagram being model gorgeous and recording 5,000. Like, she truly is what we would be if we were queens of pop. Yeah. Like, she lives the life. She puts out 5,000 songs a week. She got a new one called Magical Love. It's magical. We love. <laughs> <laughs> we love. Snap. <laughs> she doesn't miss. She doesn't no. miss. What a fucking legend. So we've got that. Um, I would also like to give a shout out to Abisha, who is a rising UK talent who does... Right now, she's doing a lot of UK garage-inspired music. There's a song called Say Wherever bop very you know if you're into i guess like maybe like a kdb moment this would be for you love that and oh yes we also have some of a man that we do tolerate yes i do have a a man song here (laughs) you have a a man's song joel Corey remixed don't forget my love Mm -hmm. diplo and miguel yeah bop joel Corey kind of kind of smacks every time i know right yeah it's like he's hot. He's hot. He is hot. And yeah. a man. Yeah. These things happen. They slip through the cracks sometimes. Yeah. They do. Speaking of hot and a man, I'll also tell you a story. Oh. From last night. Oh. We'll save it for the after show, too. Okay. I'm going to show you a photo, too. It's, it's really embarrassing for me. The flavor. But, uh, well, <clears throat> put a pin on that. Okay. But, yeah. Any, oh, also knew who I want to shout out before we wrap this up. Know who put out a new album this week? Uh, We're gonna wear pink every day. No way, did he? Brandon and the Clubs put out an album this week. And you know what? I have to say, Uh, the album is called Sparkle. Yep. I have to give it up to Brandon and the Clubs Uh, for the TikTok effort. Yeah. The dedication, the costumes, the sparkles, the bathing suits, the pool. Mm -hmm. I am fascinated by the, what's the word that I'm looking for here? The the effort. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to Brandon and the clubs. Mm-hmm. It like brings me so much joy. I don't know how to explain it. That's his goal. It's like, hey clubbers, my new album Sparkle is out now. Hope you stream like that's gonna I be your first kind vocal. I want that to be like me. Like Yeah. Yeah. I think it's gonna be your first guest vocal, to be honest. I want to be your productions. Yeah. I love that. Oh. Uh, wow. Hey, well, rights. we have some things we we do need to discuss in this after show so uh why don't we uh head over to the interior illusions lounge yes and uh get to talking thank you everyone thank for... you everyone for joining us for our renaissance mm-hmm. if you made it this far uh-huh. if you made it through the three hours of episodes from last week yeah or whenever it was that we did it i don't even know what day it is today and beyonce or parkwood entertainment if you're listening let's let's also get like uh nile rogers on the production let's get some grace <gasps> jones references let's go some deep disco let's you know, while you're listening, if you've got time to add it to the Renaissance acts. Speaking of now, Rogers, mm. uh, telepathy, Christina Aguilera. Speaking, yeah. Why don't we get? I got Christina that right, didn't track? I? Yeah. Let's look at the, the fighter jumped out this episode. She did. I don't want to hear from. She did any not of jump fighters. out the Avita balcony, but she, no, he, she's here. That's right. All right, everyone. We will catch you on the. We'll talk about her a little bit. Hello, after show couch. Yeah. See you there. See you after the show. Yeah. Until next time. Stream Sparkle. Stream Sparkle. (laughs) Also not me. And we will see you.